Welcome to the Strength for the Day podcast, which is a daily Bible study with Dennis Fountain. We hope this time together will be challenging, sharpening, uplifting, encouraging, and strengthening to your Christian walk. Thank you for joining us, and we pray you are helped through today's study. Hey, good morning, and welcome to Strength for the Day as we jump into uh, a new week. This uh, recording will drop um, May, let's see, May 13th of 2024. And if you've been with us this month, we are in the book of 1 Samuel. We really are tackling a large book, and so I apologize. We're not going to really dive into every story in depth as much as I would like to. Uh, but we are going to be able to cover quite a few things. And so most recently, we have been with the children of Israel. They have, uh, of course, wavered from their walk with the Lord. They've turned their back against God. But God uses Samuel to draw them back to the Lord. Uh, but we're going to see that, again, they make a choice today uh, that draws them away from the Lord once more. And so we pick up this morning in 1 Samuel chapter 8, chapter 9, and chapter 10. It's kind of a one uh, congruent story that all flows together, uh, and so we are going to uh, see that today. So we're going to bounce around. I'm going to read uh, a handful of verses. I've got them written down here, and then we'll get uh, get a few thoughts, and we'll be done. All right. So First Samuel chapter number eight, and we're going to read verse one down through verse number ten, and then we'll read a couple other verses. So First Samuel chapter eight. If I can even get in the right spot. And uh, the Word of God says this, Now it came to pass when Samuel was old that he made his sons judges over Israel. The name of his firstborn was Joel. The name of his second was Abijah. The name of his, and they were judges in Beersheba. But his sons did not walk in his ways. They turned aside after dishonest gain, took bribes, and perverted justice. Uh, man, what an important lesson right there to to invest in our children. Uh, remember, Eli had the same issue, and may God help us to never put serving God um, above serving God in our family. Uh, God gave you the family first. I think really even for pastors, this is a great thought for those of us who serve in ministry. If you're a pastor or someone serving in ministry, don't ever put your ministry before the family. Lead your family first. Uh, Samuel, uh, it appears, didn't do that and lost his kids, but I, I think he may have. They just made a choice to walk away, which they have, that's their choice. God's not going to force himself in their lives. And we actually see that continuing in the passage. Verse number four, then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel and Ramah and said to him, look, you are old and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now make us a king to judge us like all the other nations. But this thing displeased Samuel when they said, give us a king to judge us. So Samuel prayed to the Lord and the Lord said to Samuel, Heed the voice of the people in all that they say to you, for they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me, that I should not reign over them. According to all the works which they have done since the day that I brought them up out of Egypt, even to this day, with which they have forsaken me and served other gods, so they are doing to you also. Now, therefore, heed their voice. However, you shall solemnly forewarn them and show them the behavior of the king who will reign over them. And so Samuel told all the words of the Lord to the people who asked him for a king. So the people of Israel come to Samuel and they say, "We, you're older, your sons are not going to do it. We, are, we want a king. We want to be like all the other nations. And Samuel gets upset about this and he prays about it. And God says to him, just listen to their voice, listen to them, because they're not rejecting Samuel. Hey, Samuel, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. They're rejecting God. They, they're not saying we don't want Samuel ruling over us. They're saying we don't want God ruling over us. But Samuel, when you go back to them, I want you to warn them that this is not going to work out how they think it is. And so Samuel goes. He speaks to the people. And we jump down to verse number 19. Samuel warns them. He tells them the, the king is going to tax you. The king is going to, uh, he's going to lead in, in a proud way. He probably will, will do his own thing at times. You're going to not want to follow him at times. And Samuel lays out all these warnings. And verse number 19, it says this, Nevertheless, the people refused to obey the voice of Samuel. And they said, No, 
But we will have a king over us that we may also be like all the other nations. And our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. And Samuel heard all the words of the people, and he repeated them in the hearing of the Lord. So the Lord said to Samuel, Heed their voice and make them a king. And Samuel said to the men of Israel, Every man go to his city. And then they would go, chapter number 9, they set up a way to choose who they're going to have as king. And the Lord directs them to a man by the name of Saul. Now you could go and read some things about Saul. He, um, I'm going to jump down to verse, uh, <clears throat> let's see. Well, you know what? This is just too good. We're just going to re keep reading. All right. Chapter nine. There was a man of Benjamin whose name was Kish, the son of Abiel, the son of Zorar, the son of Bekorath, the son of Aphi, a Benjamite, a mighty man of power. And he had a choice and handsome son whose name was Saul. There was not a more handsome person than he among the children of Israel. From his shoulders up, uh, he was taller than any of the people. Now the donkeys of Kish, Saul's father, were lost. And Kish said to his son Saul, Please take one of the servants with you and arise and go and look for the donkeys. And so Saul goes and looks for his father's donkeys. And God would connect Saul and Samuel, and God would tell Samuel, this is the man that I want you to choose to be king. And so Samuel would tell Saul that and would give him a sign that the donkeys had returned to their father. And then in chapter number uh, 10, you find Saul being anointed as king and the people coming and bringing gifts to him and proclaiming Saul as king. Uh, in chapter 9, we learn a bunch of things about Saul. Uh, you learn that Saul at this time in his life had a desire to honor God. Uh, Saul was humble in chapter 9, verse 20 and 21. Um, he was like, who am I among my father? Who am I among my father's house? In chapter 10, verses 20 through 33, Saul presents himself with humility. Um, Saul had a desire to lead people. Saul was desired, um, excuse me, Saul was open to the Lord. He was open like, is God really in this, Samuel? Are you sure that I'm the right one? Uh, 1 Samuel chapter 10, chapter 10 and verse, um, I believe it's verse number six. My pages are sticking together here. First Samuel chapter 10 and verse number six. Um, Samuel gives Saul a confirmation. The spirit of God's going to come upon you and you will uh, prophesy and you will be turned into another man. And basically God was saying, Samuel, tell Saul there is a sign coming and that would come true. And Saul would be one in that story that he would go and people would speak to him and Saul would would say things that wouldn't be known unless God had anointed him to say it. But all of this is taking place. The children of Israel want a king. Samuel gets frustrated. God says, do what they're not rejecting you or they're rejecting me. Lead Samuel to pick Saul, a humble man who's open to the Lord, who wants to follow God. As we look at this passage, what God does in, in this specific place is... I think God shows a great amount of patience with his people because remember he says, Samuel, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting me. And no doubt God could have just said, forget it, like I'm done, but he doesn't. Instead, God brings them Saul. <laughs> now, now you and I, if you've read scripture, you know the end of Saul's life was not like the beginning. And we'll see that at the very end of the month in our study. Uh, the, the title of that lesson will be what could have been. But God, in this part, Saul is a man of great potential. And even though Israel was getting ahead of the Lord and making demands of God and saying, we don't want your warning, we don't care, we want to be like other nations, give us a king. God, in his mercy, said, okay, I'll give you a king, but I'm going to give you a king that has potential to pursue me. When I look at this topic and this thought, I see the children of Israel very discontent with what God was doing in their life, thinking they could do better themselves. Well, if I was in control, if we had a king, if we were like other nations, if we could go to war like them, and if we were like that, then maybe things would be better for us. God, this is your fault. And they're placing the blame on God's leadership and rejecting his leadership in their life and desiring to do things their way. 
you know, all of us struggle with this area of discontentment, of wanting to do things our way, not wanting to wait on the Lord, not trusting that God is working. We get ahead of God in our relationships, in our finances, in our job situations, in our living conditions, uh, in where we're living, in our plans. Man, God, you're not moving fast enough. I'm going to do it my way. Can I warn you today that God is perfect and God is working. And sometimes maybe things are not going as fast as you want or the way you want. That is not the time to say, you know what, God, I'm going to do it my way. No, instead, may we be like Samuel to say, God, I want your leadership completely. May we even be like Saul in this passage to say, God, before you do any, before anything happens, I want to make sure this is you. You know, in our life, we can get ahead of God by making some quick decisions that eventually we regret. Today, as you go through the day, maybe just pause. And before you make decisions, Lord, is this, is this something that would be honoring to you? God, is this decision something that's going to glorify you? Is this a decision that you would want me to make? And so today I want to encourage you, don't get ahead of God. Don't get discontent with the situations in your life and just say, fine, I'm just going to do my own thing. Today, may we step back and say, Lord, help me to follow your spirit. God, help me to know what you want today. God, help me to be what you want me to be today. And may we be like Samuel and Saul in this passage of saying, Lord, we want confirmation from you. We just want you to be at work rather than being like the children of Israel. Fine, God, I'll do it my way. So let's ask the Lord today to help us to be content with his leadership and allow him to guide and direct our daily decisions. Have a wonderful day. We'll see you tomorrow as we pick up in chapter number 11.